generator exhausts control in Nigeria using activated carbon from discarded rubber tires. Abstract many Nigerian homes and institutions are powered by generators due to inaccessible electricity from national grid. Consequently, many people suffer from life-threatening complications due to their exposure to carbon monoxide poisoning from generator emissions. Besides, improper disposal of discarded rubber wastes in Nigeria constitutes menace to human health. The purpose of this study was to develop effective system for pyrolytic conversion of discarded rubber tires to activated carbons, which could be used as adsorbents for reducing generator emissions in Nigeria. Carbon black produced from the pyrolysis of the rubber tires were chemically activated using potassium hydroxide, potassium carbonate and hydrochloric solution of mixture of copper, I, chloride and aluminium, 3, chloride with impregnation ratios ranging from 0.67 to 2.33. The range of values for surface areas, pore volumes, and pore sizes of the resultant activated carbons included 285 to 846 m2 slash g, 0.116 to 0.354 cm3 slash g, and 2.92 to 6.54 nanometers, respectively. The carbon monoxide reduction efficiencies of the activated carbons were very high ranging from 94.0 to 95.5% indicating the feasibility and the effectiveness of this project in finding solutions to the twin problems of carbon monoxide poisoning from generator, as well as, improper disposal of discarded rubber tires in Nigeria. Commercial application of this project will allow effective management of discarded automobile tires and also make locally produced activated carbon to be affordable, thereby, reducing the dependency on imported activated carbon. Keywords, carbon monoxide, generator exhausts, waste management, activated carbon, pyrolysis, rubber wastes. Introduction It is unfortunate that countless number of people in developing countries, like Nigeria, have either died or are suffering with life-threatening cardiac complications due to carbon monoxide, co, poisonous fume inhalation from sources such as gasoline or diesel-powered engines, generators, wood cook stoves, car exhausts, and poorly ventilated rooms or chambers, Silifubra ETAL 2011, Afolean ETAL 2014. In Nigeria, the major indoor source of carbon monoxide is petrol or diesel fuel generators since most homes, offices, shops, and establishments are run on generators because of the poor or inaccessible electricity supply from the national grid, Akinyemi ETAL 2018, Ololai and Audible 2020. Although other air pollutants such as nitrogen dioxides, NO2, sulfur dioxide, SO2, and particulates, beside carbon monoxide, are also emitted from the generators, carbon monoxide seems to be of major concern because of its deadly nature in humans. Meanwhile, improper disposal of non-biodegradable wastes, such as discarded vehicular tires, is also a major challenge in Nigeria, since the improper waste disposal incurs environmental, health, economic, as well as, social costs. Vehicular rubber tire is a material often made from petroleum rubber with weight composition of styrene butadiene rubber, SBR, 62.1%, carbon black, 31%, extender oil, 1.9%, zinc oxide, 1.9%, stearic acid, 1.2%, sulfur, 1.1%. Masias Garcia ETAL 2003, an accelerator, 0.7%. Merchant and Petrich 1993, Zavaniatu and Stavropoulos 2003. While most developed countries are working towards zero waste practice, which is referred to complete recycling and recovery of all resources from waste materials, most developing countries have not given much attention to the huge amount of waste generated daily in the countries. The wastes are usually dumped in unsanitary landfills, burned in open fields or even thrown in water channels, thereby causing untold environmental pollution and adverse health effects. The global challenge for humanity is to design effective waste management system for climate change mitigation. 
many researchers have explored the potentials of reprocessing waste tires to valuable products such as artificial reefs, aggregates in asphaltic concrete, fuel for cement kills, and activated carbon production, 10 ETAL 1995, Topco 1995, Eldon and Sanusi 1999, Coronal de C and Morricone 2004, Coronal de C ETAL 2011, Truzine ETAL 2012. Besides, value-added products such as fuel gases, liquid oil and carbon black have also been recovered from waste materials through pyrolysis process, Zabaniatu and Stavropoulos 2003. It is a process that has since been employed as an environmentally friendly tool for treatment and adding value to waste. Pyrolysis is a process that involves heating a material to a temperature range of 250 degree-500 C, in the absence of oxygen, so that the material can be volatilized and decomposed to oil, gas and char or carbon black, Martinez ETAL 2013. Carbon black is a form of paracrystalline carbon with short and medium range ordering in their lattice but lacking crystal-like ordering, Voiles ETAL 2001. It has a high surface area to volume ratio, although lower than that of activated carbon. Activated carbon, AC, is a porous solid adsorbent that has been processed to develop its internal porosity, surface area, as well as surface reactivity, for the removal of pollutants such as insecticides, herbicides, chlorinated hydrocarbons, heavy metal ions, among others, from any medium. Activated carbon is often preferred to other adsorbents such as zeolites, porous clay or, silica gel, activated alumina, molecular sieve adsorbents, among others, for removal of gaseous pollutants because of the high microporous volume and adsorption kinetics, Baba and Yaleswaray put 2020. The negative consequences of the inefficient disposal of discarded vehicular tires and the toxic generator exhaust emissions in indoor environment cannot be overemphasized. One approach to finding solution to the challenges of improper disposal of discarded vehicular tires, as well as, indoor carbon monoxide poisoning from generators, is to develop an efficient process for the production of activated carbon from locally available raw materials such as discarded vehicular tires, for the purpose of using it for adsorption of co from generator exhausts. Extensive research work had been carried out to investigate the effects of various activating chemical reagents on the quality of activated carbon produced during the activation process, Macias Garcia ETAL 2003. The various activating chemicals that had been used were zinc chloride, ZNCl2, phosphoric acid, H3PO4, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, potassium hydroxide, KOH, sodium hydroxide, NaOH, and potassium carbonate, K2CO3, Tsai ETAL 1997, Hayashi ETAL 2002, Fierro ETAL 2006, Sing ETAL 2008, Ashmore and Dimitrulopolu 2009, Yurgun ETAL 2009. Chemical activation process is often preferred to physical activation process because chemical activation process occurs at lower temperature and shorter time. The chemical activation process also produces activated carbon with better porous structure than the one produced during physical activation process, Yalton and 7 2000, Yurgun ETAL 2009, Ioannidu and Zabaniatu 2007. In Nigeria, there has not been so much done on the development of efficient process for managing discarded automobile tires in such a way as to convert the discarded tires to value-added product like activated carbon with the aim of using it as an adsorbent for reducing generator toxic emissions, Zabaniatu and Stavropoulos 2003, 10 ETAL 2000, Kater La ETAL 1991, Hari Rudigen 2 ETAL 2017, Thakra ETAL 2017, Vishnu and Manikantan 2015, 10 ETAL 2008, Setiawan and Al Jawahari 2015, Lee. ETAL 2000. The purpose of this study was, therefore, 
to minimize land, air, and water pollution due to indiscriminate disposal of waste rubber tires and generator exhaust emissions. The objective was achieved by developing a pyrolysis process for the conversion of discarded automobile tires into valuable products including fuel gases, liquid oil, and carbon black. The carbon black was converted to activated carbon which was used for co-adsorption from the generator exhausts. The coverage of the research work included the collection of discarded automobiles tire wastes in communities around Lagos State University, Oho Campus, Lagos, Nigeria, the crushing of the discarded tires to granular particles, the setting up of pyrolysis equipment for converting the waste tires to carbon black residue, the chemical activation of the carbon black to activated carbon, characterization of the carbon black and activated carbons produced, as well as, the testing of the activated carbon effectiveness in the removal of co from generator exhausts. The Brunnaremet Teller, BET, Analysis was used for the evaluation of specific surface area in M2-G of the carbon black and activated carbon, yielding important information in studying the effects of surface porosity and particle size. The carbon content of the activated carbon and carbon black produced during the experiment was also determined. The project is significant in the sense that it will help to create an effective management of discarded automobile tires through their conversion into valuable products including carbon black which can be subsequently used for making activated carbon. This will make locally produced activated carbon to be affordable, thereby reducing the dependency on imported activated carbon. Besides, the project also demonstrates the feasibility of using discarded tire-based activated carbon for mitigation of indoor air pollution due to generator exhaust emissions. Materials and Methods The research methodology was divided into five sections which included, design and fabrication of equipment for pyrolysis of discarded rubber tires, pyrolysis of the discarded rubber tires, activation of pyrolytic carbon black residue, characterization of carbon black and activated carbon, as well as, assessment of carbon monoxide removal efficiency of the activated carbon adsorbent. Experimental Materials Regarding the feedstock, waste rubber tire was the only raw material used for the pyrolysis process during the research work. The waste tire samples were collected from dump sites around Lagos State University, Oho, Lagos, Nigeria. Reinforced steel was removed from the waste tires before they were shredded manually into chips, washed with clean water, and then spread under the sun for drying. Chemical balance, measuring cylinder, and stop clock were also used during the pyrolysis process for measuring feedstock weight, cooling water volume, and progressing reaction time, respectively. Empty containers were prepared for the collection of condensed liquid oil and char during the pyrolysis process. The setup for the pyrolysis process is shown in figure 1. For the activation process, five different chemicals were purchased including potassium hydroxide, KOH, potassium nitrate, K2NO3, aluminium chloride, AlCl3, hydrochloric acid, HCl, and copper, I, chloride, CuCl. Aluminium chloride, hydrochloric acid, and copper, I, chloride were mixed together to form a hydrochloric solution of aluminium chloride and copper, I, chloride. To assess activated carbon removal efficiency of the toxic gaseous emissions from gasoline-powered generators, a 2 kVA Senway gasoline generator and a gas analyzer were rented. Activated carbon holder equipment was also constructed using plastic material. The height and diameter of the activated carbon holder were 220 mm and 50 mm, respectively, plate 1. Equipment design and fabrication for pyrolysis of discarded rubber tires. The pyrolysis system comprised of gas-fired furnace, pyrolysis reactor, heavy oil condenser, 15 liter capacity, two cyclones for light oil condensation, each of 40 liter capacity, scrubber for gas cleaning, 30 liter capacity, and gas storage bag, figure 1. The condensers and the scrubber have the same thickness of 5 mm. The pyrolysis reactor was a cylindrical steel vessel with thickness, internal diameter, and capacity of 12 mm, 250 mm, 
and 25 kg of shredded discarded rubber tires, respectively. The reactor vessel was closed with two pairs of flanges, each with thickness of 10 mm, top and bottom. There was a hole in the center of the reactor vessel which served as the gas exit. The gas-fired furnace was made in such a way that it would provide uniform heat to the pyrolysis reactor. Solar power temperature sensor was inserted in the reactor vessel to measure the temperature in the pyrolysis reactor. Pyrolysis of the discarded rubber tires. The main reactor containing 9 kilograms of the dried shredded tires was placed inside liquefied petroleum, LPG, gas-fired furnace for batch pyrolysis process. Before starting the pyrolysis process, between 20 and 30 liters of clean water were measured into each of the two cyclones used for light oil condensation. The 9 kilograms of shredded tires was pyrolyzed at a temperature range between 236.C and 488.C with an average temperature and heating rate of 382.44.C and 0.636.C, respectively. The temperature was maintained for about 5 hours, residence time, at 488.C. At the end of the pyrolysis experiment, the non-condensable gas was collected in a gas storage bag and utilized to power 3.5 kVA gasoline generator with fuel gas adapter. The 60 watts compact fluorescent lamp connected to the generator lightened up throughout the running period of the generator. The condensable liquid oil was collected in two different containers, the first container was used for heavy oil collection, while the second was used for light oil collection. About 4 liters of heavy oil and 1 liter of light oil were collected. The furnace was left to cool down to room temperature, 25.C, before the char or carbon black left in the reactor vessel was removed. Activation of pyrolytic carbon black residue. The carbon black produced during the pyrolysis process was subjected to chemical activation using three different chemicals including potassium hydroxide, KOH, potassium carbonate, K2CO3, and hydrochloric solution of mixture of copper, I, chloride, CuCl, and aluminium, 3, chloride, AlCl3. Different weight ratios or impregnation ratios, IR, of activating chemicals to carbon black were used. Impregnation ratio, IR, is the ratio of the amount of activating chemicals to the amount of char or carbon black used, as given in equation 1, Kerv Heetal 2001, Bayar 2006. Regarding potassium hydroxide as the activating chemical, weight, or impregnation ratios of 50 colon 50, IR equals 1, and 40 colon 60, IR equals 0.67, were used while for both potassium carbonate and hydrochloric solution of copper, I, chloride, CuCl, and aluminium, 3, chloride, weight, or impregnation ratios of 50 colon 50, IR equals 1, and 70 colon 30, IR equals 2.33, were used. The carbon black was ground to pellet form before mixing it with various activating chemicals in 1000 ml measuring cylinder at room temperature. The carbon black was impregnated with the chemicals for 24 hours after which the impregnated materials were packed into some plastic containers. Characterization of carbon black and activated carbon Samples of carbon black and activated carbon produced during the pyrolysis and activation processes, respectively, were sent to Amatubello University Laboratory for analyses and characterization. The Brunnagaremit Teller, BET, analysis was carried out using Quantachrome Novawin Data Acquisition and Reduction, 1994-2013 Quantachrome Instruments, Version 11.03. BET analysis was used to determine the specific surface area and pore size distribution of the carbon black and the activated carbons produced during the experiment. The carbon content of the activated carbon and carbon black produced during the experiment was also investigated. Assessment of carbon monoxide removal efficiency of the activated carbon. The activated carbons produced were tested for their removal efficiency of toxic emissions in particular, carbon monoxide, from portable generator. The generator used for the study was a 2 kVA Senway gasoline generator, model number, EC5800CX, 
while the analyzer was a multi four stage gas analyzer, model number, Exhibit 1 multi gas analyzer. The prepared activated carbon particles were packed into the activated carbon holder with one end of the packed holder attached to a hose and plugged to the exhaust pipe of the generator while the other end of the holder was connected to the gas analyzer, plate 1. The duration for the assessment of carbon monoxide removal efficiency of the activated carbon adsorbent was 3 minutes. Adsorption capacity or removal efficiency of activated carbon is influenced by factors such as concentration, pH, and ionic strength of the activating medium or solution, nature of the adsorbate materials, as well as, the activated carbon preparation conditions including activation temperature, activation time, and chemical impregnation ratio, IR, which affect the pore development and surface characteristics of the activated carbon produced, Kerv HETAL 2001, Bayar 2006. The removal efficiency of pollutant is illustrated by the relation given in equation 2, Bayar 2006. Where E equals efficiency of pollutant removal by the activated carbon, CI equals initial concentration of pollutant and CF equals final concentration of pollutant. Results and discussion. During the pyrolysis of the discarded rubber tires, only 3.7 kg of carbon black or char was obtained from the 9 kg of the rubber tires loaded into the pyrolysis reactor. The limitation of the study was the technical hitch of inefficient design of the air fuel intake port of the pyrolysis furnace. The air fuel intake port of the pilot scale pyrolysis reactor could not promote good air to fuel mixing for complete combustion as indicated by the yellow flame produced in the furnace throughout the period of the investigation. This might be responsible for the loss of valuable time and heat energy experienced during the experimental stage. It clearly showed that the reactor design was not efficient and needed to be improved upon in future related research to avoid loss of valuable fuel energy and environmental pollution. The results of the BET and carbon content analyses on the carbon black and activated carbons produced during the experiment are given in Table 1 while the results of the experiments performed regarding the activated carbon, Adsorption efficiency of the generator gaseous emissions are given in Table 2. The pore sizes of the resultant activated carbons, Table 1, are very big when compared to the kinetic diameter of CO, CO2 and H2S, generator gaseous emissions, which are 0.376, 0.33 and 0.36 nanometers, respectively. This is important since adsorption increases when the pore diameter of the adsorbent is 1 to 5 times bigger than the adsorbate diameter. According to International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, IUPAC, the pore sizes of the activated carbons and the carbon black with range from 2.92 to 6.54 nanometers were mesopores since their pore widths were between 2 and 50 nanometers, Lowell ETAL 2006. For the surface area, it can be assumed that the adsorption characteristics of adsorbent with higher surface area will be better because there will be more available spaces where the adsorbates could be retained. Adsorption capacity of adsorbent is highly dependent on the surface area of the adsorbent. March ETAL 1984, Reynolds 1982. Dot the large surface area of activated carbon, among other influencing factors, is responsible for their adsorption properties. Regarding the adsorption capacity performance of the activated carbons produced, it was observed that the activated carbon efficiency for removing carbon monoxide, CO, from the generator exhaust emissions was relatively high regardless of the nature of the activating chemicals and the impregnating ratios, IR, used. The range values of co-removal efficiencies for all the chemically activated carbons were between 94.0 and 95.5%. When the activated carbons were impregnated with activating chemicals including KOH, K2CO3 and hydrochloric solution of mixture of CUCL and LCL3 with the IR of 1, the adsorption capacity efficiencies were 95.0, 94.9 and 95.5%, respectively. When the impregnating ratios different from 1 were used, the efficiency values of the activated carbon materials for activating chemicals KOH, K2CO3 and hydrochloric solution of mixture of copper, I, chloride and aluminium, 3, 
chloride were 94.9, 94.6 and 94%, respectively. Although activated carbon impregnated with hydrochloric solution of mixture of CuCl and AlCl3 using IR of 1 had the least surface area, pore volume and pore size of 285m2-g, 0.116cm3-g and 2.92 nanometers, respectively, the activated carbon was observed to have the highest co-removal efficiency, table 2. This might be attributed to his high carbon content, as well as, the strong p-complexation bonds formed between CO and CuCl. The activated carbon efficiencies for the removal of CO2 from the generator exhausts were very low regardless of the nature of the activating chemicals and impregnating ratios. This indicates that the impregnated activated carbon materials are not good adsorbents for carbon dioxide from the generator exhausts. When the activated carbons were impregnated with activating chemicals including KOH, K2CO3 and hydrochloric solution of mixture of CuCl and AlCl3 using the IR of 1, the adsorption capacity efficiencies for CO2 removal were 40.3, 40.6 and 40.3%, respectively. When the impregnating ratios different from 1 were used, the efficiency values of the activated carbon materials for activating chemicals KOH, K2CO3 and hydrochloric solution of mixture of copper, I, chloride and aluminium, 3, chloride were 40.6, 39.7 and 40.9%, respectively. Similar to CO2 removal, activated carbon removal efficiency for hydrogen sulfide removal was very low. The activated carbon efficiencies for removing hydrogen sulfide from the generator exhausts when IR of 1 was used for activating chemicals KOH, K2CO3 and hydrochloric solution of mixture of CuCl and AlCl3 were 42.5, 39.7 and 42.2%, respectively. The activated carbon efficiencies for removing hydrogen sulfide from the generator exhausts when IR different from 1 was used for activating chemicals KOH, K2CO3 and hydrochloric solution of mixture of CuCl and AlCl3 were 39.1, 36.9 and 41.6%, respectively. Conclusion This study has demonstrated that through pyrolysis process, discarded automobile tire could be converted to a value-added product like activated carbon which could be used to reduce carbon monoxide concentration in the generator exhausts. This is significant as it will reduce the number of people that may die from carbon monoxide poisoning due to exposure to gasoline or diesel-powered generator exhausts. The aim of this study was achieved in the sense that the discarded rubber tires were converted to activated carbon materials which were then verified to be effective in the removal of carbon monoxide from generator exhaust. Commercial application of this research project in Nigeria will allow effective management of discarded automobile tires, as well as, make locally produced activated carbon to be affordable, thereby, reducing the dependency on imported activated carbon. Availability of locally produced activated carbon will make the domestic application of the activated carbon as adsorbent for carbon monoxide feasible. Acknowledgement The authors appreciate all who in one way or another contributed to the success of this work. Dr. Patinva, George, Toyasi, Lukman, Aisha, Emmanuel, Benjamin, and Chibik, are appreciated for their support regarding the activated carbon analysis. The authors also express their gratitude to Sola and Hamd, the technologists, who fabricated the pyrolysis equipment.